Coming up, Disney's newest Christmas-themed hard ticket event gets off to a rocky start. Park Chairman Josh DeMauro gives us a new update on the re-theme of Dinoland USA. And new aerials suggest a moment we've all been waiting for for a long time, maybe just days away over at Epcot. No more crater? Could this be real? All that and more on the way. This is Mickey Views News. All who come to this happy place Welcome. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop and that's what's bothering me. First up in the news today over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, I'd be remiss not to cover this incredible new event that Disney is putting on. Incredibly underwhelming in this case, according to a lot of folks. I have not actually experienced this event in person. I was not there on night one, but I feel like I got to witness every moment of it thanks to half of the going public that went to this event being folks who were filming it and posting it online, which of course is the case with anything new that Disney does these days. We all want to know, is it good? Is it bad? Before we spend our money. So tons and tons of creators who live in the area, they all head out to document the start of these new events and rides and things of that nature. Anyways, you guys, this event was not what people expected. And I think this event is a good case study that taps into the broader issues that we have been seeing lately and talking about in terms of what's going on at the Walt Disney Company. For those of you unaware, during the Christmas season at the Disney parks, Disney hosts Christmas parties, where for an extra fee, usually slightly more than a regular day ticket, you get to spend the night in the park with a limited number of other paying guests, which means that there are shorter lines on the rides, and Disney makes it fun with special stuff like snow on Main Street. Formerly, you had the dream lights on Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom. Those were not special for the hard ticket event, but they definitely added something to that special snow that you had on Main Street, the sight line down Main Street that you would get during Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Since then, though, Disney has actually budget cut those out. Those are no longer part of it. Now it's just these dim projections going on over at Cinderella Castle. It's quite underwhelming. One of my favorite things that they have during the Christmas party is the different holiday drinks and cookies and different snacks that you can collect around Magic Kingdom Park, which are complimentary. There's no extra charge. I prefer that to the complimentary trick-or-treat candy during the Halloween season, personally, if you'd like a little bit of a hot take there. The big news for this year for the holidays is that Disney is hosting a brand new hard ticket event at Disney's Hollywood Studios called Jollywood Nights, which costs $159 per guest on most nights and gets you just four hours in Disney's Hollywood Studios. It runs from 8.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., although you can arrive an hour before without needing a day ticket. So you can squeeze five and a half hours in Hollywood Studios out of this ticket if you show up exactly when you are allowed to start entering. Now, how Disney sold this is, it's going to be a golden age of Hollywood, Art Deco aesthetic themed event for the Christmas season, where guests are encouraged to dress up. You're gonna have access to all the rides and shows in the park with low weights. You're not gonna be waiting a whole lot for anything. There's gonna be special character meet and greets. There's gonna be special food and beverage available for purchase, special shows. And the thing was, just right out of the gate, a lot of that stuff didn't sound super special or any different from Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. In fact, the fireworks spectacular for this event is a recycled one that they've previously shown during the holiday season and just during regular park hours in Hollywood Studios, there's really nothing special about it. The real draw for this party, what makes it unique, is the themed entertainment. You can see in the poster, you have a band on Hollywood Boulevard, that's what Disney advertised, and Disney promised musical acts all over the park. The most anticipated of which were the Twilight Soiree at the Tip Top Club over at the Tower of Terror, and Jazzy Holidays at the Brown Derby. Sounds great, right? Well, well, everyone shows up for this first night of this new event and right away it gets off to a bad start. So for cast members to be able to discern which guests to let onto rides, which guests are part of this special event, you need to have a wristband. And while the wristband distribution location that was located at the front entrance of the park seemed to work all right, the location for guests who were already inside the park, who were also doing the event that night, that one became a giant line. It was held up with guests waiting over an hour 
in some cases just to get their wristband that says, hey, I'm here for this event. And mind you, you only got four hours to start with. So this is eating into the time you have during this time slot that you paid so much for. Disney has now added a second wristband distribution location inside the park to help prevent this from happening again. Then there was the live entertainment. When you walk down Hollywood Boulevard, there is a DJ, uh, which does not seem very 1920s, if I do say so myself. And then people head over to the Hollywood Tower Hotel Courtyard to see the much advertised band. And there's going to be a bar over there and all of this. And there was indeed a band in the courtyard dressed up all nice. You've got a live singer and everything. This was the closest to what was promised at the event, I'd say, in terms of the atmosphere. This is the area where everyone's been getting their Instagram photos to share and say, hey, I went to this event. But the issue quickly became on night one. Since Disney made this an upcharge drink location, you have these relatively run-of-the-mill food and beverage carts. You have cast members who are dressed in regular food and beverage attire trying to serve all these pre-mixed drinks. And more people keep coming to this area. More people keep arriving. And the line, it gets very, very big, so big, nobody can even tell if they're actually in the line or not. And that's because it keeps mixing in with the crowd who's also just trying to get over to see the band. They think that's what the line's for. Eventually, cast members were able to get a real line formed for the bar area that you have in the courtyard. And Disney is now providing cast members in the vicinity with Hollywood Tower Hotel costumes to aid with the immersion in this area. So if you were there on night one, at this point, if you waited inside the park to get your wristband, and then you waited to get a drink over at the tip top, each of those would have taken you about an hour of just waiting around. So at this point, you basically have an hour and change left before your $159 experience is over. And that brings us to what I found the most underwhelming, and that was the Jazzy Holidays at the Hollywood Brown Derby, which is an amazing restaurant, an amazing venue, great food in there, one of my most recommended places for you to eat at when you're at Walt Disney World. Get the Cobb salad. There's also a walk-up area, an outdoor seating area if you don't have a reservation for the Brown Derby itself during regular guest hours. I highly recommend checking out the Brown Derby. Anyways, for this event, it's advertised that it's going to transform into a jazz lounge where you're going to have a jazz band, holiday decor. In reality, almost the entire venue was bare. No decorations at all, with the exception of the live music area where there's a strand of garland, one strand, and then a strand of tinsel on a piano. And the jazz atmosphere that was advertised ended up consisting of one guy Disney hired to play the piano. Piano. And while from the comfort of our homes, we can laugh at the lack of decor and the lack of atmosphere in here, guess who actually tried to experience this, who are actually there? They were more upset about the fact that they had such a hard time even getting in during the event. Because you can't just pop into the restaurant, you have to join a virtual queue on the My Disney Experience app. It's one of those things where you have to join a walk-up list, and then you're later notified when you can head in. Now, of course, this system is much preferred to having a physical line where you have to physically wait to actually enter and just see inside the Brown Derby. So I'm not proposing to have a better solution to this, but I think if you let less folks into these parties and made the inside of the Brown Derby cool, so it feels like you actually got something in exchange for battling the mobile app and keeping your phone charged, that would be the perfect solution. You know, just make it something that's worth going through all these hoops, jumping through all these hoops, where you have to keep checking notifications and, you know, all this sort of stuff. You do all that and this is what you get. At this point, if you did the three things that we've covered so far from the first party, the wristband, going to the bar by the Tower of Terror, and going over to the Brown Derby, that was your whole four hours. The party was over by that point. That being said, there were a few highlights at this party. First, there were two stage shows, which were both well-received. One was the all-new Disney Holidays in Hollywood show, which played over at the Theater of the Stars, where the Beauty and the Beast show normally plays. And the second was Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas sing-along, over at the Hyperion Theater. If those sound of interest to you, those might make this event more worth it 
to you. Also, if you're a big character meet and greet person, you've got some rare sightings to enjoy here, like Phineas and Ferb, all the OG characters in their holiday garb. Following the very poorly received night one, Disney quickly added Santa Stitch, Holiday Jiminy Cricket, Santa Duffy, Pinocchio, Mary Poppins, and Snow White to the character meet and greet lineup for this event. So getting into my thoughts here, this is what I have to say. It's the very first time they've ever done this Jollywood Nights event. Did the first ever Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party back in 1983 go off without a hitch? No, it absolutely didn't. We just didn't have a million vloggers covering it. I'm sure it didn't have a quarter as many offerings as it does now. As these parties go on year after year, Disney builds on them, they figure out what works, and they keep optimizing it and investing in it, and that's what really creates these institutions that we have like Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party and the Halloween. Halloween party. Here's the thing though, those early Christmas parties I'm sure cost much less than this does. So cutting through a lot of the minor complaints about night one logistical stuff and you know things that Disney should be able to quickly work through, the fundamental issue I see here is Disney is charging guests Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party ticket prices for something that is not a fraction as worthwhile. This event looks and feels cheap. If I were in charge of Disney, we would take a loss putting this event on for the first few years. Once you make your event into something that everyone has to see, where every single night is selling out, that's when you start profiting big time. Walt knew that. First, make something that is really awesome, put a lot of money into it, which doesn't just generate hype for the sake of hype. What it does is it generates positive word of mouth. People want to go again. People want to have their family come, tell other people about it. And that's when you can start making lots of money. And that's when you can start selling out all the party nights and making it something really in demand. And then you can just rake in the profits. Instead, what Disney's done here is they've made a fool of themselves with this Jollywood Nights. The way it started off, they didn't put enough money into it. And perhaps Disney could make this into something that we we are compelled to go to in the future, make it something really awesome, but that requires pulling out the wallet, hiring more live entertainment, giving guests more perks for being there, just stop being so cheap. The easiest way to force Disney into investing in their parks is to stop giving them money. I ask all of you, just don't go to this Jollywood Nights thing. Disney does not deserve your money. Go to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, you'll thank me later. There's a lot more value there. If Disney can't get away, with being cheap because it results in guests ceasing to go to Disney, ceasing to pay Disney, Disney will stop being cheap. Conversely, if Disney can put out a total nothing burger and invest no money in the parks and sell out events like this one, it's clear why Disney says, hey, you know, we don't need to listen to the critics. We don't need to invest more in this. It's making us money as is. And a lot of our guests think that it's absolutely fine just the way it is, which is sad to say, but that really is the situation as it exists. And that brings us over to Disney's Animal Kingdom for a quick pit stop as Josh Damaro was interviewed this week by Entertainment. Entertainment Weekly, and tomorrow mentioned the Dinoland USA overhaul, which most recently Disney told us consists of Indiana Jones and Encanto, and I've also added from our sources, I do believe Coco is included in this plan as well. Tomorrow said to EW, quote, we've got so many stories to tell. We have so many things we want to make even better in the theme parks. My plan is to continue to share that with the guests. I know people are like, my gosh, I can't believe he's saying this. Is he serious? Is he not? The answer is we are absolutely serious. So that's the park's chairman telling us, hold out hope. We are coming in with some big jaw dropping overhauls and expansion soon. Meanwhile, same guy in charge, the dream lights at the Magic Kingdom, those have been budget cut out. Those cost too much. LED lights are too expensive for Disney, yet somehow they're gonna build whole new sections of the parks. What about maintaining what we already have? What about journey into imagination? What's going on with that? And also this Jollywood Nights thing that we were just talking about. It's been so long since we've seen a serious wave of investment in the parks. Think about it. The last one was back in 2017, 2018, which is what got us Tron, Guardians, and Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. And even if the boy who 
cried wolf was serious this time, it's still not going to be till the late 2020s till we get any new attractions at Walt Disney World beyond Tiana because of the time required to actually build these things these days. It's pretty wild to think about. With that reality check out of the way though, I do hope Josh is serious about this. He is saying here that he's serious. But Josh, the reason we question if you're serious is you've been in charge of the parks for almost four years now, and we've gotten precisely nothing in terms of large new investment in the parks. As I just said, Tron, Guardians, the Skyliner, those were from a wave of investment back when Chapek, of all people, was parks chairman. We got more substance out of his reign as chairman than we have under Josh Damaro. And maybe it all does have to do with the board and the other executives and the moneyed interests who own the entire company, who are making the situation what it is and Josh's hands are just tied. To some extent, I'm sure that's certainly the case, but at the same time, we have high-level sources who are telling me how people who report to Josh tomorrow are the ones cutting back on maintenance and Christmas decor and nickel and diamond guests at Walt Disney World. So Josh tomorrow most certainly does have some culpability, some accountability on all of that. What Josh should do if he's actually serious, like he claims that he is, stop talking to Entertainment Weekly and get on the phone with Walt Disney World president Jeff Volley and tell him to bring back the castle lights. Bring those back. That's a three million dollar ask. Let's see if you can manage that before we start to entertain these delusions of grandeur about 60 billion dollars in projects that you want us to believe are serious prospects and not just busy work for Imagineers and hot air to blow at investors and shareholders while the executives keep spinning their wheels, collecting their bonuses, and contributing nothing to the legacy of this company. Actually, it's worse than that. They've been actively damaging the reputation the name Disney has. It's such a shame. Last up in the news today, we finally have something actually new. Speaking of something actually new, this is very exciting. Finally, it appears that the days of the Epcot Crater, or rather the years of the Epcot Crater, are just about behind us as new aerials from BioReconstruct show walls being constructed around the incomplete Festival Center building inside of the existing walled off site, which indicates that quite soon, Disney will be taking down the current walls around the center of the park, and it'll be only the Communicore Hall and Plaza building itself that'll still be walled off. The rest of the middle of Epcot will finally be back open. This new area, which looks like it's about to open, will feature new pathway, new plants, and a Walt statue. I kid you not, that is the extent of what we are getting here. There is no Fountain of Nations, there's no Interventions, there's a few modern art sculptures in there, there's a very weird Epcot logo, shaped pathway area which isn't centered. If you notice the planters on one side overlap it, but the planters on the other side respect the circle. And then the globe in the middle of the logo, the Epcot logo, it has a globe. They've instead changed it to this bizarre shape uh, where it's not a globe or part of the globe is you know painted uh, so it blends in with the dirt. Very strange there. Lack of substance aside though, I think for most of us, it's just great to see that this is finally being completed. It's finally going to be done. You'll be able to walk from the Epcot entrance to the World Showcase, straightforward, not around, not around the side, not on a bypass walkway or anything like that, and you won't have to walk past several miles of walls to boot, uh, which is pretty exciting. I think you'd all agree that alone is something to look forward to because Walcott, I am pretty sick of it. And I think when I really started to just get sick of it and start to lose interest in it was when we realized that the Epcot overhaul, that this center area, it had been budget cut down to just a food booth area once things changed financially at the company back in 2020. And once that became obvious, that became apparent that it was just gonna be trees, some pathway. I was like, let's just get this thing done. And finally here, it looks like that is about what we are going to see happen with the walls coming down here momentarily. Very, very exciting stuff. I wish we had more exciting news, more things to look forward to, but it's just so dry. You know, you just have tomorrow saying, oh, we are going to do stuff in the future. And it's like the future when, you know, it takes so many years these days for Disney to develop and then actually build one of these projects. How long before one of these even starts to get funded on the development end? We know that there has been some development going on with this Dinoland USA idea. There's been development work happening in Imagineering, actually planning out the layout of everything, but what's actually gonna go inside those buildings, how that's gonna work, how it's gonna be 
be laid out. I still think they are quite early on in that process, and there is very little that has been announced thus far. I really hope that changes soon, and I'll be right here to keep you on top of all of it. So that's the latest news in the world of Disney today. Be sure to subscribe with those notifications on to stay up to date on the latest developments. I am proud to announce that finally the Mickey Views store is up. This is our grand opening celebration, and already over 40 viewers have purchased their stuff on our store, their bag of merch, and some of them have actually already received their shirts and their mugs and their film photo prints and all of that. The link is mickeyviews.store. It'll be in the description below. There should be some products that pop up below this video. YouTube's supposed to have that feature now where you can actually see stuff without even leaving the app. I'm hearing lots of good feedback on the store, and it seems like everything has been working very well. Everything's been moving quite smooth with the site, which is great to see. For those of you who made it this far in the video, use code GRAND at checkout and get 10% off your order. The store is cool because it's a way for you to financially support the creation of these videos, but unlike a regular donation, you're actually getting something physical in return for your contribution, which does create lots of logistical challenges on our end, but there's nothing else quite like it. So I'm very happy to have the store up for you guys in time for the Christmas season. Right now I am wearing the Mickey Views comfy crew neck sweatshirt, which is really, really awesome. It has this embroidered Mickey Views logo right here. Nothing too loud, something that you can wear outside and support the channel. Also here, uh, I've got the mug on me. I thought you guys would like to see. It says Mickey Views on one end and on the other side, it says have a magical day and it has this cool feature where it has the same paint color on the handle as well as inside the mug itself looks very modern looks very fresh and I will say this has been the best seller so far so be sure to head on over and see what we have in stock as part of this grand opening release thank you all so much for watching I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and are getting ready for the Christmas season here getting those lights up getting those trees up a lot of fun to be had this time of year from the Mickey Views Magic Studio this is Brayden I'll talk to you soon have a magical day.